We have a special guest with us, Max Blumenthal from the Gray Zone is here. Hi, Max. What's up, Jimmy? Now, the reason welcome, why Max... We're welcome gonna, back. Oh, thanks for having me. With that. We're, we're, we're back. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about this because you were doing a fundraiser through Goat Fund Me, and it was to hire three new employees over at Gray Zone, three new reporters that are doing great work. And yeah. you, your goal uh, you, was $125,000. You raised 90809 and tell me uh, what happened. Well, this was an incredible outpouring of grassroots support from people who watch this show. And GoFundMe has informed me, they informed me like nine days ago, that due to some external concerns, they have frozen the funds. And I published that full email from a someone named Sabrina, I don't even know her full name, at GoFundMe's ironically named Trust and Safety Team, telling me that they had frozen the funds and that they need to investigate further. And I haven't heard anything since. I've sent several requests for you know, due process, for more information, or to just simply release the funds, and I haven't heard anything back. So today, we've decided... We have to pull the plug on this GoFundMe fundraiser that was so important to building the future of our independent outlet, and which was obviously important to so many other people. I mean, the encouraging, effusively supportive messages we've been getting just keep rolling in. Uh, and GoFundMe has proven to be exactly what people said it was, which is a tool of Western intelligence agencies and the censorship industrial complex that has been censoring social media. They have put financial sanctions on us because we have disrupted the official narrative around the Ukraine war and so many other of the national security state's psychological operations. That's what this is about. Those are the ex uh, external concerns. I'm never going to get the information on who they are, but we know who they are. They're the same people that detained and interrogated Kit Clarenberg who we are fundraising for at Luton International Airport in London over his work for the Gray Zone. The British counter-terror police interrogated him about his work for us, his factual journalism for us. No one has ever discounted a single thing he's reported. They're the same people who cut our new managing editor, Wyatt Reed, who we're fundraising for off from Venmo and PayPal without any explanation after he went to Donbass and showed on video you, the Ukrainian military shelling civilian targets and abusing people's human rights. They're the same people who canceled me and Aaron Mate when we went to talk about our work at the Gray Zone at Web Summit in Portugal, the biggest gathering of the tech industry. Those people were the Zelenskys. Vladimir Zelensky and his wife personally demanded that they cut us off there so they could broker uh, weapons deals with uh, different tech companies. So that's who we're up against. That's who GoFundMe answers to. And we uh, are asking everyone to demand a refund. We're going to work on getting everyone's money refunded. And we've moved our fundraiser to Spot Fund. You can find out about that on thegrayzone.com, on my Twitter account, on the Gray Zone's Twitter account. Um, their co-founder has promised us speedy transfer of funds and that they're not going to kick us off because of outside interference. But what we're looking at here is part of a much bigger picture where the Western regime that is sanctioning one third of the world's population is now sanctioning its own citizens. So this is similar to what happened to the Canadian truckers, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. So what happened uh, in that situation? Can you explain? Do you remember what happened? Tell people. Well, the Canadian freedom convoy of truckers had rolled into Ottawa to protest the COVID-19 vaccine mandates and uh, to get uh, compensation for the lost work and destruction of lives that were uh, imposed on them through Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's lockdowns. And the Canadian government, the Liberal government, was so threatened by the Canadian Freedom Convoy that first they started telling banks to seize donors' funds, and when that failed, they imposed emergency law on February 7th, 2022. That meant martial, essentially martial law, and they called in the federal police to remove the truckers, and GoFundMe immediately seized close to 10 million Canadian dollars from individual grassroots contributors, and then announced that they were not giving it back. They were going to donate it to, quote, established charities without the consent 
of the donors. So they were like, it was an unwarranted seizure and theft of the funds of Canadian and U.S. citizens. And it was only really thanks to uh, U.S. governors and U.S. senators threatening GoFundMe with investigations that they agreed to release the funds and let people have them back. So we're not even going to let it get to that point. We're telling people, take your money back. They're giving money back in like three to five days. They're, they're, they're agreeing to do that so far. And we're going to make sure all money gets back to everyone and to, to give it over to Spot Fund to help us build the future, the gray zone to support three of the best young independent journalists working today who are working. I mean, I, I don't even know if I could call it a shoestring, but they're, they're, uh, I mean, they're hungry. They're literally hungry and metaphorically hungry to do this kind of journalism and, and they deserve to be supported. So we want to at least create positions for them for a year or two and reward their dedication. So spot fund will hopefully be the, I mean, they've put in writing that they will be the place to do this. Um, I should say, Jimmy, uh, we're not the first outlet that experienced this from GoFundMe. Uh, Mint Press was also banned from GoFundMe and had their funds seized without any explanation. So they've had to take their fundraisers elsewhere. Independent outlets that challenge the war state, the national security state, are being financially sanctioned by the same national security state that sanctions people from Venezuela to Iran to Cuba and uh, the war is here at home. So I, it must be in the GoFundMe's terms of service that they could do this, um, f but that doesn't mean it's legal either. So that could be challenged in court, which it certainly needs to be. Um, um, so people's minds yeah. would be blown if they actually knew that, oh, you mean an outlet like GoFundMe is actually influenced by the CIA? that it's actually influenced by the military industrial complex and the security state, they would really, why would they care exactly? Why would they care? Well, because they're all, there's a handful of billionaires that run everything globally. You know, there's a cabal of capitalists and just like in that movie network, there are no countries, there are only companies. And that was yeah. from 1975, I think. Right. So uh, this it's only gotten a million times worse. And there really is a handful of cabal. Like, for instance, I tell people that YouTube and Google are also in bed with the security state, the CIA, the military industrial complex and the global capitalists, because they are them. They're the most they're the richest, most wealthy company in the history of the world. And so now they say, I can't say anything that goes against what the WHO says, for instance. Well, you, you know who the number one donor to the WHO is? It's Bill Gates. So it's a billionaire, yeah. a single billionaire that's dictating what everybody can say on YouTube when it comes to anything about Bill Gates or anything about health or vaccines or mandates or lockdowns or anything like that. And uh, so... That's how, and so I'm sure there's another billionaire or two that has got a direct line straight to GoFundMe, and they can just shut you down like this. If they, they, this is, this is uh, straight up censorship. This is straight up, uh, you know, the security state um, managing the narrative. Because if they can't manage the narrative, if they can't manage to. Di to discredit people like you, and if they can't manage to to suppress people like you, then they have to start disappearing people like you, and that's a little harder. But they'll do it. They do it all the time, right? Yep. I mean, it's it's in some ways worse or more insidious than an outright open dictatorship. It's what uh, Sheldon Wolin called inverted totalitarianism, where a state maintains the illusion of liberal democracy yeah. because it's a more effective tool for managing and controlling its own citizens. And so here we have the state, we're sh I, the national security state, hiding its fingerprints through privately owned Silicon Valley companies that essentially are our digital commons and that small companies like ours or small outfits like ours have to rely on to fundraise because we run on a shoestring budget. And they're trying to exploit that advantage to financially sanction and starve us so we can't report anymore because unlike an outright dictatorship, they want to maintain the soft power of a liberal democracy. So they can't just come out and just ban us. They can't criminalize the gray zone directly. But we have documented a clear and outright campaign of repression against our personnel by 
Western state intelligence agencies from Kiev to London to Washington. And we can just look at the Twitter files that Aaron Mate obtained that showed the Ukrainian SBU, that's their version of the FBI, their security services, which is a hideously repressive outfit, uh, sending a list of Twitter accounts to ban to the FBI, which included Aaron's name, and then the FBI going to Twitter and telling them, hey, can you ban these um, Twitter accounts, including these Americans and Canadians on behalf of this foreign intelligence service? <laughs> the FBI agreed to do that. Twitter said, this is even too crazy for us. This is the old regime before Elon. They even said, this is too much. These are just American citizens voicing their views. But that's what we're up against. That's what we're facing here at GoFundMe. That's who GoFundMe is caved to. And they're not accountable to anyone. There's no due process. It's completely undemocratic. So and we're looking at a new face of repression and a war on the First Amendment that the civil liberties groups like the ACLU, they're not confronting this. No. And who's, sta who's standing up right now for C.J. Hopkins, who is a dissident writer in Berlin, an American living in Berlin, who is one of the principal opponents of the COVID restrictions, the lockdowns, the mandates, the arrests, the beating of protesters, who is now going been pronounced guilty by a German court and will face 60 days in jail or 3,600 euro fine simply for tweeting two pictures of a mask with a swastika ingrained in them, photoshopped in them as a protest against the mask mandates. He's, he's simply being punished for calling masks a tool of uh, mass conformity. So th this is th the war on free speech is, is reaching new dimensions. Uh, whether it's financial or informational, and pretty much every one of us who speaks out is up against it. So it's like, if we don't take on GoFundMe now, everybody's going to be next. Well, uh, you you mentioned Sheldon Wolin, and I'm I'm pretty sure that he talked about, uh, you know, the America has gone through a corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, as I've heard Chris Hedges say, and that the you know the. It usually uh, it's it's a dictator and you can focus your ire uh, on that dictator who's right. doing that. But not in this corporate coup d'etat, the dictator has been replaced with the nameless, faceless corporate state. And it's ubiquitous, controlling every part of your life. I remember I used to do jokes about it 20 years ago about how everybody has to take a drug test and everybody says it's OK because it's not the government doing it. It's just your employer. But people in America have to remember that the government is run by corporations. It's not the other way around. The government doesn't tell the corporations what to do. The corporations tell the government what to do in the United States, which is a big problem with with health care. Right. So people are people think that we went through covid and that was done to us by the government. That wasn't done to us by the government. Covid was done to us by big pharma and a handful of billionaire corporations. So uh, I just wanted to show this, too. Uh, they took away your uh, your donate button, too. So now nobody can donate. It says this organize this organizer has currently disabled new donations to. Well, the reason yeah, why we is because they're going to take all your freaking money. Right. Well, we had to do that because we didn't want people to continue to donate right. when GoFundMe was refusing to give us the money that we were going to use to sponsor our hardworking contributors. So I just felt like it was unfair. Like GoFundMe wasn't telling the donors we're freezing this money because for all we know, they could t try to maximize the donations and then take it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So we've got to get it refunded. We w It will be refunded. They cannot do that if refunds, they cannot seize the money if refunds are requested. There's, We've uh, linked to the form, the very easy to use form for requesting refunds in our article at thegrayzone.com and we've linked to the new fundraiser so you can easily just transfer the money there and like help us to continue to operate as an independent outlet that's accountable to our audience. We're not, they want what they want is media to be accountable to billionaires, to be accountable to the state that provides the Washington Post and the New York Times with all its sources on the Ukraine proxy war or Iran or COVID. And they don't want people like us or Jimmy Dore operating. So this is your chance to give a fing the finger to go fund me the whole and the whole censorship industrial complex um, and, and to support three incredible journalists. All the money is going to them. None of it's going to me. 
So when when uh, uh where's that? What's the new URL to to donate? Where do I where do I direct people? What's well, it's at Spot Fund, and you just go to my Twitter account, Max Blumenthal. I my okay. pinned tweet is the link to that. Okay, you can go to the Gray Zones Twitter profile, and it's there, and it's okay. in the article. Um, goes or we just go look up the Gray Zone at Spot Fund. Okay, it's Gray Zone at Spot Fund. Uh, hey, listen, I want to, uh, one more thing I wanted to, so, but, I mean, uh, this is like what they did to that Simon Abeda guy, right? So, Simon Abeda is a African journalist. Um, Atibo. Is that how you say his name? Yeah, okay, I'm butchering, okay, I'm butchering his name, of course I am. But he was the one who would ask Jen Psaki pressing questions, and he would say, hey, why don't you ever take questions from, you know, African journalists? And if it because if it was Trump, that would, they would call it racist because it was because it was Joe Biden's press secretary. Everybody felt like she was a victim somehow. <laughs> and, they were giving her a cake and he kept it. So yeah. you're interrupting my question. And her question was just a long thank you to Jen Psaki for that, being so great. Yes, <laughs> that is. And so he so he uh, funded a news organization or founded and he used Stripe, which is another way to raise money. So right. uh, another billionaire owned thing. And uh, Stripe cut, uh, kicked him off their platform. So now they couldn't raise money anymore. Uh, and so that's how they. So this is how the global capitalists, which is a handful of billionaires that run everything, uh, keep control of everything. This is how the Bilderbergs do it. This is the WEF. If you think your government is actually running your country, you're you're a chump. It's that's being run by global capitalists um yeah, that was after the washington post ran a hit piece on him that i guess you know jen saki and the biden white house coordinated of course so it's like they're not going to do it directly they're cowards they don't want to look like dictators but they're operating like a straight-up mafia from behind the through the neoliberal model where everything that should be public is private and we can't tell the difference between the public and the private so it's like Okay, so everybody it's goes. Like the World Economic Forum is a public-private partnership. Like, <laughs> yes. who's governing us? So, everybody, if you want to help uh, hire those three new reporters over at a uh, gray zone, go over to um, Max's Twitter feed, click on that link, and make your donation. And make sure you get your money back from GoFundMe. Make sure you do that. And I wanted to ask you before we let you go, Max. Um, Last time I had Bobby Kennedy on the show, he agreed to do an interview with you. Uh, I might have mistakenly categorized it as a debate, but an interview. You're a, you're a reporter. You've written two books on Israel, Palestine, and he agreed to do it. Is that, is that coming to fruition? Well, more recently, Bobby Kennedy was talking to the press at the Iowa State Fair, and he brought up unprompted that he, in his own words, was debating me in a couple of weeks. He called me Matt Blumenthal, but I he think did. he was referring to me. I don't know. I like to call you Matt. I, I think I like Matt better. You should maybe change it about this GoFundMe thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> what? No, I'm Matt Blumenthal. Can I have my money, please? Yes. <laughs> That's a different guy. Yeah. Oh, so, so maybe so, he won't. I don't know. Maybe I saw that video, by the way. I, I think you tweeted it out, or I saw it somehow where he yeah. did say that, yeah, I'm going to be talking to Matt Blumenthal in a few weeks. So uh, it hasn't happened. Um, I'm not good at predictions. I hope it happens. You know, uh, I'm I'm sympathetic to Bobby Kennedy's campaign because of the we we share a love for free speech and we both push back against the COVID narrative, which is probably the biggest thing I ever did in my life, um, besides maybe Russia Gate. Um, so I hope he does, and you know, uh, he doesn't have a chance in hell of becoming the Democratic Party nominee, which I told him that the first time I interviewed him, because that's why they have super delegates, so to make sure that he can't win, and that look what they did to Bernie Sanders two times in a row. You don't think they're going to do it to you? They're going to do it to you harder because you're not a pussy like Bernie Sanders. Um, and they've so, already rigged it, like by putting South Carolina first. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And and they're already rigged it by trying to uh, put. Joe Biden's uh, leading political com opponent in jail. Uh, that's exactly what they're doing. Could you imagine if it was the opposite? If there was a guy who was polling ahead of Donald Trump and Donald Trump had that guy <laughs> indicted four times? Could you imagine that? That people would be it, 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 people would be in the streets with guns. I mean, lefties would be. Uh, wow. Can you imagine 
uh, being his secret service in jail. What is what an awful detail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how they set the trial date for the day before Super Tuesday. Yes. Like complete co- coincidence. Just, we just, just didn't have any open days. So they, they don't care if there's an that's another thing you have to the people doing this to Trump are the people who own the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and the military industrial complex. And the we learned through the Trump presidency that the CIA doesn't work for the president or even the government. They work for a handful of, of global capitalists. That's what the CIA does, which is just like the military industrial complex. Um, all right. Well, let's we got to move on. Max, I really appreciate uh, you coming on. Good luck. Everybody getting your money back from GoFundMe. GoFundMe now in bed with the fascists. Nice to see. Anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye? No, just wanted to thank you for all the support and uh, welcome home. Well, come see us live on tour. We're going to be in Toledo, Detroit, St. Louis, Tampa, Boca Raton, Orlando, Dallas, Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets.